Once you've written the greatest rock and roll album of the 90s, what do you do? I've got nothing to prove in my musical abilities or anything. I don't think the band has either. I thought at the end of the last record that the band was going to break up and I was never going to write any more music again because I didn't have any, any songs left. And being I was the fucking... Right, we were up there. We were, the, we were this band and that. Just like, we were a fucking tabloid. There was chaos going around and it come out in the music. We worked probably a bit too hard for our own good and maybe tore too much and didn't spend enough time in the studio. Songs were great. Too much drink, too much coke, that's about it. The press following you at the studio every day. Yeah, because there were some tunes on. Yeah, the beer now was like. Cause we listened to Stand By Me the other day and it went on for fucking yeah, it went ages. For ages yeah. isn't it? We went out a cup of tea and came back. A cup of tea, come back, was still on. I mean, the last album, it rocked, right? But that's basically all it done. Went out, got something to eat, it was still on. So this time, I knew that I wanted to have a break, a year off. I knew I wanted to spend. You know, most of that year writing and then the next year recording, which is what we've done. And this time round, I think, right then, you know, we've got to fucking re-establish ourselves as, you know, where, what we should have done in the first place, you know what I mean? We're a great fucking band. And I think people are realising that in this album. So there's too much at stake now, you know what I mean? I don't think people are going to stand for it. It'd be very easy for them to try and, try and do, you know, another champagne souvenir or all that, that kind of thing. They've done that. They've proved that. And... They wanted to search. I think Noel, definitely lyrically, was searching for something a bit deeper and wanted to try different things. They were saying quite a long time ago, we're going to do three albums that are going to be, you know, lay down the Oasis kind of, I don't know, the gospel according to Oasis, and then move on from it. So, um, I mean, I, I remember reading that quite a long time ago, and they, they've done that. And I wanted to make a record that, that showed a few different sides to what it is that I do. A drum loop being used on an Oasis record would have been a no-no. You know, it just wouldn't have happened before. It's just a lot different, you know what I mean? There's not too many guitars in it, you know what I mean? You can hear the bass breathes a bit, you know what I mean, I think. And obviously the stuff I've done outside the band with the Chemical Brothers and Goldie and stuff like that, you, you, can, you can gain a lot of knowledge of different things off people like that, so... Just having a look around more, really. What I do is bringing certain things to different projects, like I've worked with Massive Attack a lot, and maybe certain elements that I would have, um, that they capture may have come into to like how we've made this record and the way they approach maybe the beats. Because it's real sort of dancing, that's what I'm into really. I, I love all that sort of funky stuff as well. Alan is not aware, right, of what a fucking brilliant drummer he he can be, if I'm being honest. Because I think he's the most gifted musician in the band at the moment. They were just sort of experimenting with beats, different synths, keyboards, which they'd never used before, different ways of approaching tracks. And I suppose that's why I was there, really. I was thinking, well, I'm going to use drum loops on that, and, you know, the bass line's going to be really complicated here, and um, it's not going to be all about the song, so to speak. It's going to be about, more about the musicianship. And I was thinking, well, you know, is it all going to work with new people and in a new environment? And the amazing thing for me is that it all worked and it didn't feel weird, it just felt really natural. So, and it still sounds like an Oasis record, but it sounds like a different kind of Oasis record, which is what we should have done last time. It's what a true band does, doesn't it? it? Moves forward within their own identity. I'm still influenced by the Beatles, obviously, but, you know, I've listened to a lot of... Um, like the beta band, for instance, and the way that they do things. Although we didn't employ any of their recording techniques in the way that they sort of, they will pick up a, like a, a plastic bag and a packet of crisps and make a drum track out of it, there's none of that, but I suppose there was a certain sense in listening to their records thinking, well, yeah, anything is possible. You could work with like 10 different types of artists over a period of time and you get little bits from each of them and then start using them in, in like a current project you're doing, you know. But we were more using um, Spike, who, uh, who'd worked with you know, U2 and Massive Attack and people like that. We were using his knowledge of... who picked his brains more about the sonic side of... You know, how, how, we'd, how, we could get, how we could get the record to sound modern with it still sounding like a rock and roll band. So we tried try to do something different and incorporate everyone in the record. Um, using keyboard sounds, looping up guitars, just try, just experimenting. That was the thing with this record, was experimentation, but not letting it get out of control. We just wanted this album to be a little bit different than the last one. 
Not for anyone else, that fellows. When I was in the pub, I, I had a two pound coin and it was written around the side. And I wrote down on the back of a cigarette packet in case I forgot, standing on the shoulder, well, what I thought I'd put was, standing on the shoulders of giants, in brackets, album title. But I was drunk and when I got up in the morning, it said, standing on the shoulder of giants, a bum title. That's all I need, Lennon, Lydon. But you know, people are gonna say that, the, you know, the giants are the Beatles and the Stones and the Who and the Sex Pistols, so I suppose it's them, really. But it doesn't mean that, it's just, it just sounds good, you know, it just looks good on the front of the record. It's a milestone record for this band, anyway. There's a lot of shit bands about, and there's a lot of people that don't, you know, mean it as much. They just want to make the money and that, and toe the line, and not live the lifestyle. And I was trying to get out of the party, party mode and that, so... I got a few bits and pieces, threw them in a the bag, got my guitar, picked up the wife off the kitchen floor, um, got, in the, got in the taxi, went to the airport and went to Thailand for about a month. This is the music factory.